I think this actually is creating more of a complex because back when a girl just was a girl who happened to be a tomboy, so she's, a, she's a girl. She just likes baseball. Yeah. So well, yeah. are you trans? What? What? Do, do you want to suture up your vagina and put on a mechanical fist? No, no, no. I just, <laughs> I just like to climb trees. I, I just <laughs> like Barry Bonds. <laughs> When did this happen? Why do you think the left right now is so obsessed with applying the progressive gender ideology to children? We've talked about transitioning uh, children before in the past on a personal level, just parents who do it, but it is kind of the cause at large right now. I have my theory on that. Let me know if you noticed it, why you think that is. Today, we are uh, addressing, rebutting this uh, video, this, this package, I guess, in a, on a program, uh, Raising Gender Neutral They Beats, was I think their title. Yeah. Um, and this is, of course, the latest cause that we've been talking about. Let's, uh, do we have a clip? Let's roll the first clip. I warn you, this is very uh, disturbing to a lot of people, but um, let's roll it. Instead of a boy or a girl, gender neutral babies are known as babies. Babies are babies without a known sex. That means only parents sex. and trusted caregivers mm. know that baby's anatomy. They say the gender part comes later and is left up to the child. What if it's a what's it? It's a baby with rabies. <laughs> and scabies. Ooh. Maybe he has scabies. <laughs> Tell me, baby. Here's the thing. How many takes do you think that took with putting the balloon in? Right. Oh yeah. I'm just imagining. Like, I just yeah, I just imagine like that. Budget. Ah, yeah. that damn it. Um, and don't you know? This is one thing too. I would like to know Silicon Valley, Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, who have these rules where we have to talk about gender and separate gender from sex. Right. They just said babies without a known sex. How do you expect right. us to play by rules that you can't possibly even follow because it's made up? Sex and gender have always been the same thing. Gender yeah. was a grammatical term largely until very recently. And this is the thing, gender neutral parenting, it used to mean that you didn't force your children to play with Tonka trucks or your girls to play with Barbies. I'll do both of those things, by the way. <laughs> both of them. As soon as my boy comes out, he's getting a Schlitz in one hand and a Tonka truck in the other. I'm That's not right. raising San and Francisco grandchildren. <laughs> But now they want Boom. you to think, and this is, I want to get to all the details here, because yeah. it's very disturbing. They want you to think that if a girl is a, is a tomboy and she plays sports with her dad, that she's transgender now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And this is in order to be more sensitive. I think this actually is creating more of a complex, because back when a girl just was a girl who happened to be a tomboy, so she's, a, she's a girl. She just likes baseball. Yeah. So well, are you trans? What? What? Do, do you want to suture up your vagina and put on a mechanical fist? No, no, no. I just, <laughs> I just like to climb trees. I, I just <laughs> like Barry Bonds. <laughs> yeah. It's okay. Same thing if a boy is sensitive. You, you know, if a boy yeah. used to be sensitive, it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You want to you wanna, you wanna cut off your penis? No, 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 no. I just, I just, I just like rom-coms. <laughs> <laughs> Something because I watch them with mom. I think in trying to be more sensitive, these people are creating an atmosphere where people uh, are, are going to be, uh, they're going to have more societal pressure on them. Yeah. Well, we have, they're people are trying to raise these kids in a completely genderless environment and, and, and they're hiding it. We'll go from others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that creates some discomfort, and it forces the child, we'll get into this, they're now forcing the children into this sort of non-binary, they realm of mm. pronouns. And there's an irony here that's lost. Let's, let's go to it. The gender reveal oh, yeah. won't happen anytime soon. We did not assign a sex at birth, which means when they assign. were born, um, we, they had genitals and we know what they are. Uh, we just chose to acknowledge that those genitals don't indicate anything about gender. Wait, okay, chose to acknowledge? <laughs> What is it? Gonna, first off, no sex at birth. I thought gender was separate from sex. I'm no. so confused. Again, the sex is important. We were told that sex is biological, right? Mm -hmm. And gender is how you identify. Well, right now they've just said sex. The first lady who's introducing this package at whatever it is, local affiliate, yeah, right. Burlington, <laughs> Vermont. I have yeah. no idea. PBS said sex, and they're going to go back to that with a birth certificate. We just chose not to acknowledge the sex. Right. Oh, you chose not to acknowledge the sex. Okay. What about doctors? Yeah. What about anyone involved with modern medicine or all that yeah. we have come to know up to the year 2020 involving biological sciences? Think about it. So, uh, what do you do? do you go into a doctor, you go, hey, is my kid healthy? Well, I think he's healthy enough. Well, let me take a look. Uh, what's, your, uh, what's your child's weight? Uh, 85 pounds. Well, uh, okay, is your daughter a go, 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 I'm sure that's fine. <laughs> Just have, just what's the height? Right, well, what should be the size of the cranium? We, I think we have an overlay here. You can look at these charts. They are all dependent on a child's sex. Yeah. 
Yep. Anyone who has a dog knows that. I have Betty. <laughs> Betty is on average 15 to 20 pounds lighter than Hopper for the breed standard. Right. What does a doctor do? Risk hate speech because you chose to not acknowledge the sex. Your words, not mine. And by the way, outside of the realm of medicine, even the preference for certain toys with l young children based on innate sexual characteristics, not just social norms. The greatest indicator that we have of young people, children, boys and girls, as to how their behavioral patterns will manifest themselves, not only, not only themselves, but in their interactions with other people, is their genitals, is their biological sex, especially before yeah. you introduce language into the mix. Of this, there can be no debate. Let's go to the next one. <laughs> Your next question might be, <laughs> is Sparrow a boy or girl? Can I see Elmo? The answer, can I see Elmo? to be determined. <laughs> My own mother did not so know uh, Sparrow's uh, genitals for the first three months even though Watch she was this. living with us at the time. Look how smug. You're doing so good. Sparrow's parents decided so to woke. raise their baby oh gender gosh. neutral, meaning this. Sparrow will decide gender when older. Even Sparrow's yeah. birth yeah. certificate yeah. says sex unknown. Well, 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 first off, before we get to the birth certificate, Spirit we realized my mother didn't know, and she lived in the house for a year. Like, what are you trying to pull a trick? Are you playing cups? Like, woo! What is this? <laughs> I hate that. And the birth that she won't determine her gender until later. Even her birth certificate says sex yeah. unknown. Oh, no. You Three made them interchangeable. Now. And this is what they do. They try and walk backwards and lay down set bear traps for you where you go, hold on a second. You can't change your biological sex. Well, I don't believe in changing biological sex. It's about gender. They're two are separate. But you put unknown on the birth certificate for sex. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 uh. Wow. Let me go create some community guidelines so you're banned for even talking about this. Yep. I would wager this is far harder than just being, uh, I can't say, n I'm not allowed to say normal, we'll have to bleep that. Mm, yeah. uh, soft bleep so people can understand, rather right, than doing yeah. it normally, or let's just go with their traditional way. Yeah. But your, your mother lived in the house for three months, had no idea, would she, she never change a diaper? Yeah, what, yeah. what was she doing there? It seems very, uh, seems very abnormal to raise a child this way. You are going to such extreme measures to hide the child's sex from other people. I mean, anyone who's ever had a child, you know they're gonna storm out of that bedroom naked at some point. Yep, exactly. Yeah. It's just gonna happen. <laughs> One of those times. She lived in the house and she didn't even know. Really? Well, how, to what lengths did you go to try and disguise the, sorry, gender, sex, whatever term you're using that day, as long as you wanna score points on me in a debate to avoid logic, what <laughs> lengths did you go to? Because guess what, that's gonna be offloaded onto your child. Yeah. They're going to see that as they grow a little bit older. All right, let's go to the next clip. We are in no way prohibiting Sparrow from having a gender. Yes, you are. And we're yes. not forcing them to be one gender or another. Actually, inter interesting you should bring that up. <laughs> so, um, because in the realm of, this is where, it, there is no consistency, because I think Facebook, is it up to 57 genders now? At one point it's it was 53, it, they wow. added some. Here's the thing, these are definitive genders. Yeah. We aren't just told that mm, there are a multitude of genders or I don't fit into the binary. That's not where this has ended. They've gone into creating specific gender categories that never existed until for some reason 2018, right? <laughs> we figured it out. Yeah. Just don't tell the doctors. Um, <laughs> and they've prosperous for our own good. <laughs> and this is important because they, identifying as they, it's its own thing. The yeah, left has said, the progressive left, they've been emphatic that a they slash them pronoun is its own exclusive non-binary identity mm -hmm. and that it reflects how someone feels on the inside. So it's not that they is a general catch-all for people who don't identify uh, as male or female. Yeah. That is one of the 50-something genders. Right. And lest you think I make, I'm making this up, let's go to the clip of them being very clear in these new instructions. When someone identifies with a pronoun, they're essentially taking their little piece of that broad universe and identifying with that. And so in using their correct pronouns, we're validating that yes, you are right in your identity and you are important. For more context than there, in that original clip she was talking about they. <laughs> yeah, it's so, important yeah, to know. So what do you do confusing. now if you don't know? Like if you're, if you're trying to be even woker? Well, that's a good question because by that logic, <laughs> Forcing your child to be a they them, how how is that any more valid than raising them as a he or a she? Right, right. Are, huh. And what's what is this concept of forcing your child? You short of abuse, you're not forcing your child to do anything. This is another thing when people talk about spankings or disciplinary action. Right. I don't want to get into whether you're you're pro spanking or not pro spanking. But people go, well, what are you spanking, adult? 
I also wouldn't tell an adult to go to his room. It's not an appropriate <laughs> yes. analogy. I wouldn't tell an adult to stop playing in his own sh- <laughs> I wouldn't tell his, I wouldn't tell an adult to stop pulling on his balls like it's a door knocker from Young Frankenstein, but I have to do it with my nephew. <laughs> it's not a valid compa- Are you forcing your child to grow up in your house? Are you forcing them not okay. to live in their own filth? Are you for- forcing them to not watch R-rated films? And by, by the way, the only people who identify with these these pronouns like they it still is only the trans community. Yeah, it's very exclusive. So this is, we need to be important, we need to be purposeful about this. When you say, I'm not gonna force my child to be a he or a she, but I'm okay forcing them to be a they by your own rules. And I know your rules are a little bit murky with the uh, sex and gender being interchangeable here, but let's try and apply some consistency. So by your own rules, they, them is its own exclusive gender category. You don't wanna force them into he or she, but you want to force them into the they, them category, which is a category, and is exclusive to the transgender community, effectively you've decided to force your child into the category with a demographic of a 42% attempted suicide rate. Yeah. yeah. By the way, pre or post op. If you could avoid that in any other instance and say, well, hold on a second, I don't wanna, I wanna give my kid the best leg up. That's why you send them to school. That's yeah. why you try and make sure that they have extracurricular activities. That's why you try to make sure that you give them their Flintstone vitamins, yeah. right? You want what's best for them. If you could avoid a 42% suicide rate, well, the vast majority, 90 something percent of kids who even identify as trans before they're told that they're non binary from their parents grow out of it. Right. So guess what? You're just being irresponsible by forcing this upon your children. And you are forcing this upon your children. This has nothing to do with people who are choosing to identify as trans as adults. You are forcing your children into a category that comes with it statistical risks that don't exist in the he or she. Next clip. We didn't want Sparrow to grow up in a, an environment devoid of gender. We want because that's not real life. Yeah, it's not real life. We want them to get to experience <laughs> all genders. Seems so, like, to me you are the expert on a real life, like Rachel Maddow. <laughs> getting treated like a boy and then getting, getting treated like someone you can't tell shows them what the diverse options are. <laughs> mm. I'm so glad you are the expert on this subject, Rachel Maddow, and your nose ring. And I love Lisa so much. So. <laughs> Just imagine it, so being raised as a child, everyone just constantly being confused as to what gender you are. Uh, what do you think this is going to do to the child's sense of identity, yeah. to always have to have a conversation? Yeah. And by the way, yeah. you are choosing to make them have a conversation. They now try to teach yep. just, this is just simple, if everyone asks everybody's gender pronouns, you know to whom that would be most devastating? If we're talking about people we care about and sympathy, it would be most devastating toward larger women. Think about yeah. this for a second. Next time you see a large, it doesn't even have to be a fat woman, a tall, broad-shouldered woman, ask her her preferred gender pronouns and duck very quickly. <laughs> you would devastate them. Yeah. It is far more rude to ask everybody's gender pronouns because that's not how we interact as a society. It will never yeah. be how we interact as a society. You are trying to make everybody uncomfortable yeah. and make everybody have to deal with borderline sociopathic behavior devoid of empathy because you want to accommodate less than 1% of the population. And by accommodate, I mean force them into the yeah, scenario yeah. when they're children because they don't have a choice in the matter. You're dumping endless confusion on them just so you can claim most woke parent. All right, next clip. Now what if Sparrow says to you in the coming years, Sparrow. am I a boy or a girl? Um, I would tell them that they're the only one who gets to decide that, that I can't know that. Well, do you feel like a boy? Do you feel like a girl? So you've now just taught your child to not go to mom or dad for answers. <laughs> oh, okay. So you know nothing. Okay. Here's what. Here's the problem with that. <laughs> is so it, all it takes is one parent to yeah. apply this to their child, and their child comes and goes. Hey, and it's just a. Tr and they'll set you up. They'll go, Am I a boy or a girl? Oh, only you can know that. Boy, thanks, mom. Guess don't. Oh, you're gonna set a curfew. Don't wait up. Okay. <laughs> I don't necessarily respect the authority of these boundaries. If you can't tell what's hanging yeah. between my legs, mom. Yeah. I identify as somebody who can stay out to whenever the hell they want. Right. Exactly. <laughs> I, but only. But you know what, mom? You're right. Only I can make that decision. <laughs> Go blow your nose. In, re in rejecting all of these norms from society, you're just these people. You're raising your children to have. No sense of normalcy or security. That's the yeah. opposite of what a parent should do. Parents should have answers for their children right. with these questions. That is part of your job as a parent. It's the unwritten contract that you sign. All right, next clip. There's no way this can go wrong. People will be like, oh, well, the child oh, really? will be okay. confused. You can think of a few. This won't no. age well. <laughs> if, if gender is really something in you, then no one's going to change that. Okay, one caveat. <laughs> 
the one potential <laughs> wrinkle, and by one potential wrinkle, I mean this thing looks like a Sharpe, yeah. <laughs> might be that, let's say that 99% of all the information that we have Right, that is based on the idea of gender being biological and not some vague innate feeling. Uh, if we accept that everything we've known about gender, sex, interchangeable, as you've made very clear before, that everyone else before you, woke mom, had it right, ooh, that means you have everything wrong. So that's just one wrinkle if your starting off point might be slightly incorrect. Yeah. Never mind, by the way, let's go to the starting off point that you are, are, are typically using for this. Uh, pioneers of gender theory, we've talked about it. John Money, he tried doing this. What could possibly go wrong? He tried raising yeah. twins. This is the famous twin experiment. One, as a boy, David Reimer, uh, I believe, was it David? I, I can't remember the exact, do we have an overlay? One boy, one he raised as a boy, one he ended up raising as a girl. Yeah. The boy ended up rejecting the identity, later committed suicide. I believe that both ultimately ended up committing suicide, if I'm not mistaken. The point is, the founder of your feast you say, what could go wrong? It went wrong immediately. The starting yeah. point went wrong. Yeah. Your pioneer went wrong. And here is the problem. The entire premise of the left's insistence on using certain pronouns is that it supposedly changes how you view yourself, right? And so it therefore changes your identity. Mm -hmm. Now, it's, it's so important to them that they've made laws about it going so far as fining people who would dare use the wrong pronouns, which are changing every single day. So if a pronoun has such a profound effect on someone, why have you decided to burden your children with these non-binary pronouns? You are the one who, are, you're still choosing pronouns, you're choosing them they. Yeah. And you've made it very clear. There's no neutral that, anymore. That that's a specific, there is no neutral. You are choosing to burden them with something that you have deemed to be incredibly important. It just changes depending on your definition from day to day. And if gender is really socially constructed, as, as leftists argue, and this is why I think it's important because we can argue about it, Phil, and we have done this before. I would say when we started this show, mm -hmm. we were arguing about this philosophically and what kind of societal ramifications they could have if we completely eliminated the idea of gender lines or norms. But this is now a very real, a very tangible application. Yeah, it's in process. In the most innocent among us, the yeah. most vulnerable among us, yeah. children. Think about it. so let, let's go with this. If gender is socially constructed, as you say, and it's the most powerful shaping force in society, as they try to make it out to be to the point where they want their birth certificates to read, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unclear. Then that means it's really important how your mother, gender, and your dad, dad, gender, raise you. Oh, wait, hold on a second. Where's the dad? Hmm. Go watch this video, tell me if you see one. If we're talking about how important gender is, okay, I'll go with that. I believe that gender and sex are important. I believe, and every single statistical reality that we have reflects this, that a child does best and requires a mother and a father. A mother and a father because, yes, gender does determine that people are singularly unique with attributes as well as shortcomings. Mothers and fathers, where's the dad? If we're talking about what's best for the child, where is the dad? And this is what, this is where all of this stems from, okay? I think this is important for people to note. It's a dad's job to stop this kind of stuff. Typically speaking, we're talking about the gender roles, right? Mom is supposed to be more nurturing, more loving, more empathetic. They listen to yeah. your feelings. Dad is the one who is supposed to be pragmatic. Dad is the one who tells you to stop, cut it out. Don't make me come back there. Mom is the one who says, well, can't we get in this toy? And dad says, money doesn't grow on trees. These are the traditional roles that we're talking about. I'm not talking about a dad smacking you around or not telling you that he loves you, he won't hug you. That's not what I'm saying, not some false sense of machismo, but there are appropriate roles, gendered roles, for mothers and fathers in the home. And we've decided for some reason now that one gender is completely limited. I'll tell you where this starts from, and this really bothers me. It comes from, I'm not saying, the gay agenda, that's what I'm saying, but the radical gay left. I'm talking about the Folsom Street Fair, this yeah. type of stuff, yeah. where we talked about, uh, we've talked about this before, this is the first society in the history of ever to have men getting married. And that was the start where we said, kids don't need a mom and a dad. Yeah. Two dads, exact same thing. I'm not saying that a kid who's in a foster home or who's in, uh, in, in, in Oliver Twist wouldn't have done better with two dads who like to do interior decoration, of course he would. But I am saying that in the ideal scenario, we should aim for a mother and a father because they both provide something singularly unique to that child that the other cannot. And this came with the idea of 
Two dads just as good, two moms just as good, but before, and this is one thing I want people to understand, before we get to this whole idea of the gay agenda that people often bring up, that's not where it started. You know where this started? I, it's, it's a societal issue. I'm using a specific example to make a point, so don't think that I have some vendetta against Jennifer Aniston. <laughs> Let me explain context. <laughs> I stopped watching Friends when Rachel on Friends said, I wanna have a kid. And Ross, who I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was the father, and she was saying, no, it was a one-night stand. I don't want you in this child's life. And this, and we, we praise this woman. Society praise. Right, oh, yeah. look, Jennifer Aniston, Rachel's having a child now with no dad because she's a strong, independent woman. Guess who's not going to be strong and independent? That child, statistically, more likely to end up in prison. Less likely to graduate high school. Less likely to get married and have healthy relationships of their own. More likely to have mental illness of any kind. It started with this idea that it's somehow virtuous to eliminate any of the gendered roles in the home. Usually it starts with vilifying the father because as some kind of a, a, a resistance to the form of an idea of a patriarchal household, we tried to make sure that we told dads, you're not all that important in society. Look, the most popular girl, the most highly paid woman in all of sitcom television can raise a baby without a father who even wants to be in the child's life, but we don't need them. And then you know what happened there? Men absolve themselves of being fathers. Well, how's that working out for you, women? Do you think that men are better today than they were 20 years ago? You feel like it's easier to find a virtuous man who will hold the door for you? This is what it comes down to. Fathers matter, mothers matter. Why? Because sex is biological, it is innate, and you can't choose it, and you certainly can't choose it for your child, and then when your child comes back and asks you what gender they are, saying, I don't know, what do you think? It's no way to raise a child, nope. it's no way to run a society. Hey there, YouTube viewer, if you like this video, click one of these other videos playing in a box uh, up there and hit subscribe or the notification bell if you're already subscribed so you can find out about our new uh, non-controversial videos, which don't ruffle any feathers and, of course, are not a violation of YouTube's algorithms. <laughs> Everyone's welcome here, <laughs> Ex except I don't know if we are, but it's our channel. Uh, I'm not sure how that works.